unknown pro family. How are we doing? Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Jay Hewitt. I will be your guest host for today's episode. With me is who you normally see or hear. Behind the microphone, Samantha Fisher, everybody. Hey, me. Just decided we would shake things up, add some spice to this, flip the roll. So today, yeah. instead of you doing the heavy lifting, you are just going to be sitting back, cruising windows down, feet up on the dash, ready yeah. to rock and roll. Yeah. I feel like this is giving me a good perspective as a host because now I know how I make my guests feel. You right. Know? Like just well rounded, like full circle moment right now. Full circle. How beautiful yeah. is that? Well, I, I do want to say before we start that you posted on your Instagram that you were going to have a guest host. Yeah. You invited people to ask questions. I did. And I would assume that most people out there probably assumed it was another professional athlete who's like world class and has all these you know amazing accolades um Maybe. and then and you're see, you're getting me so, so they were right <laughs> you are all correct if that's what you thought yeah if that's what you thought well done um so anyway let's just we're gonna dive right on in your bio okay, okay cool sure. so sam fisher here we go strap in everybody graduated from lmu loyal marymount go lions in 2012 mm -hmm. she was the first all-american at LMU in softball history. Yeah. Big deal. That was cool. Pretty pretty awesome. Lifetime goal. Yeah, for sure. Um, two-time conference player of the year, three-time first team all PS PCSC. PCSC. I know yep. it's a mouthful. So sorry. It's okay. Um second team in 2009. And here we go, guys. Let's just I, if you're if you're like doing something while you're listening, that's cool, but I need you to pause that. I need you to focus on what I'm saying right now. I Are you ready? Know, I don't even know what's next. She led the NCAA D1 in batting average with a 492 batting average, batting average, um, and offensive base percentage. On base percentage. On, what did I just say? Offensive base wow, percentage. Wow, I played my whole life. And on base percentage with 665 in 2012. She led the nation. That was cool. Like, correct me if I'm wrong, but there was not another softball player alive in Division One in the nation that had a better batting average than you. That would be correct. Yeah, so just let that sink in, everybody. And yes, she has the award. It's in her library, and it's pretty awesome. It's one of my favorite things. Don't be humble right now. That's I'm not. It is one of my favorite things. Were you just like, like, what were you? What were you, were you doing? Anything specific, or were you just? I was just trying to hit the ball where the, the defense wasn't. So that was good. That's a good strategy. It worked out. It's a bold strategy, guys. <laughs> okay, here we go. We're gonna move right along. Team USA softball in 2012. 14, 15, and 16, playing for the red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless America. Um, played for the Akron Racers, uh, 2016 to 2017. Played for Scrapyard Fast Pitch in 2018 through 2020. And then played for This Is Us in 2020. Yeah. Shout, shout out This Is Us Softball. Hey guys. Played in the Japanese League uh, for the Toto Medics in 2018, 2019, which... Go about Yep. <laughs> you go, girl. <clears throat> um, played in the inaugural season of Athletes Unlimited. She had the first hit and the first home run because why not get a little greedy there? Ooh. You didn't want to leave that, that for someone else. I'd like to thank Easton for those two things. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Easton. Um, uh, and also you were a member of the player executive committee in the inaugural season, and we're going to get back to that. Mm -hmm. um, you had your jersey retired, number 52, from LMU in 2019. You're also in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. What does that feel like? 2019 was a big year. That was a big old year. <laughs> um, and then holds nine career offensive records at LMU. Golly. Oh. Man, I feel like I need to take a water break or something. I mean, that, that's just a whole lot. Well, Sam, you ready to get into this? Let's go. Okay. I think it would be cool for you to share with the viewers slash listeners how this podcast came to be and why you thought um, that it would be important, what, what, you know, what you thought you were going to bring that's just different, that you really don't hear with anybody else. So can you take us back to the inception of the thought of, hey, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make a podcast. I can do that. Let's do it. Well, first and foremost, I sure love talking. So I think that that kind of open up the door of how can I talk and do it to where people aren't annoyed by it, you know? So I think that led me to podcast. So no, my cousin, her and two of her good friends host a podcast called Self Helpless and they had me on 
their podcast in 2017, which was my first introduction to what a podcast was. Okay. And I had so much fun. They're absolutely incredible women. Like, their podcast is very successful. They have just this, it, I don't know, it's just, I have nothing but good things to say about, about that. And it gave me such a great experience. And then I started to get into the podcast world as far as listening. And as a softball player, there's not a lot out there for softball in any area, no matter if it's, you know, a movie or a TV show or a podcast or books or whatever. There's really not a lot. So for me, it was just how can I, number one, talk to my friends about their stories? Because I know, I know my story. I know how I made it to this point, but nobody knows all the other ones, right. you know? So that was the inspiration for it. And then the whole... Uh, title of the unknown pro goes back to that where it's like we're all professionals playing this game at the highest level and we are virtually unknown right. there's very few household names in softball yeah so that part I wanted to bring light to all these athletes that have done amazing things that are doing the greatest you know that they can be doing in their field and have a really good time talking to people while doing it like yeah. I've learned a lot like I've interviewed people that I've known for years and it's like really that happened <laughs> So that, that kind of was the inspiration and just, um, I love learning and I've learned so much from doing it. Well, I remember when we, you were, you came into Houston and we went out to dinner one night and we were just like spitballing and talking and it was just like, the, I thought it was the coolest thing because as a fan of the game, as a fan of softball, like you said, we don't have a whole lot. So to have someone who is 100% committed to telling our stories and highlighting our athletes is I just thought it was really cool and even though yeah I'm friends with you but like I'm just a fan of it I think it's like the coolest thing ever so um, it's been really fun it has been fun it's when you really fun. the first one you did was Amanda Chittister. Amanda Chittister so obviously Amanda Chittister is your best friend but did you have any nerves when you went to go record that or were you just like hey I'm gonna smash this and not really out? because that's been the goal of this whole thing is I just want it to be a conversation I didn't want it to feel like a hot seat or an interview I just wanted it to be I'm sitting there having a conversation with somebody who happens to be amazing at what they do so starting off with Chitty I think was my intent the whole time because who better to sit and have a comfortable conversation with than your best friend so that's kind of where that thought process came from but no I don't think I was nervous I did it in my bedroom that was the only one that I, I <laughs> and my mom after she watched she's like Sam you can see your bath towels behind you so I'm just like <laughs> Maybe switch it up, and so I started doing it in the backyard instead. After that. That's true, yeah. The backyard, yeah, it's a really great setting. You know, you yeah. get the little wind chimes and yeah. every now and then. Like, that's yeah. some good stuff. But now, new house. Yeah, different. no backyard. No backyard, but it's yeah. okay. You're just going to keep chugging along and recording some fantabulous episodes. Thank you. The dream. Uh, the dream, man, absolutely. So, um, we're going to segue. We're, I'm not as smooth with the segue as Sam is, but I'm trying. <laughs> Um, Where are we so, going? <clears throat> like I said, you posted on your Instagram for people to send in some questions mm -hmm. that someone was going to ask you. So we're going to okay. dive on into these questions and we're going to see, I think there's a little bit of mix of more of the serious, more of your history, and then some that are just darn silly. And we're going to kind of cover all the bases with those. Are you ready, ready. To, to, I'm ready to, for, to begin? I'm ready for it all. Okay. Who is your bucket list teammate? Excellent question. I do feel like I've checked some off my list because I've right. been teammates with some amazing people, That's but true. if I could pick anybody, I would want to be teammates with Kelly Crutchman. She is, number one, a legend. Number two, just one of the best at what she does, but she has a way of getting the best out of you and not letting you get down on yourself. And I, oh, I know this because she's been one of my closest friends the last few yeah. years, but I think that it would be just such a cool dynamic to be your teammate. Can I tell you my, one of my favorite Kelly Griffin stories? Absolutely. Okay, so uh, she was, it, it was in like a, a, a tryout situation, and she was kind of right in the in the front of the dugout with a bunch of these younger girls, and they were watching a scrimmage happen, mm -hmm. and she's sitting there, and she's like li just leaning up against a bowl, sunglasses on, as, as she does. Cool as hell. And she is picking every single pitch that oh, yeah. the, the pitcher's throwing. Yeah. And she's saying it like it's no big deal. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at the younger girls that are looking at her like, like she's Whoa. a wizard. Yeah. And I was just like, that's, that's Kelly Crutchman. Like she's just gonna, she's just here to dominate. Yeah. And she's, it's cool. She's pretty cool. Yeah. Love her. Yeah. Great. Okay, next question, here we go. What can I do to play D1 college softball? Oh Ooh. boy. Yeah. Well, <laughs> first and foremost, if that's your goal, you have to dedicate just about everything that you can to it. 
but I think being realistic, this is always, this is a very common question because people put D1 on, like, it's the be all end all. Right. But you have to take a realistic look at yourself and your talent and your ability and think, sometimes D1 is not necessarily the place for me. Sometimes D2, D3, NA, even JUCO is the place for me. So number one is making a realistic assessment of yourself as a player. I mean, if you're 10 years old, you're going to be a different player when you're 15. Right. But when you're going through it, you have to be realistic, be honest with yourself, with yourself. Watch those girls that are playing. Do you want to think, I think I can do that, or that's kind of how I do it. Go from there. But if you want to play D1, I think there's mid-majors. Go in. There's, you know, the big top 10 schools, the power five. So figuring out the school that's right for you, but also you got to work your butt off. Right. You, you really have to work your butt off because it's a totally different level. Yeah. Of college in general is a totally different level no matter what you're at, but making sure that you put forward your best foot in every area, whether it's defense, offense, glove work, you know, pitching, catching, whatever you're doing, making sure that you're putting your best foot forward for all of that and constantly getting better at it. Yeah. I think when I read this to, to me, it's more of how do I find the best school and not yeah. just like, like, is, it, is your only goal just because you want to be like, I play D1? Right. Like, you know what I mean? D1 is not the be all end all. Yeah. Going in, if you play collegiate softball, no matter what level, you have accomplished something amazing. So I think that taking the stigma off of D1 or the stigma off of D2 right. or D3 and being like, well, that's a failure. Yeah. That's absolutely not a failure. There's, there is a place for everybody. And if you go and you play past high school, you, you have done something so amazing. Yeah. I played D three, so this question hits a little hits a little close to home for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. right on. That was a great answer. I love it so much. Thank you. Can you explain your recruiting process? I can. Oh, what oh, a good story! Man. I love it. Let's go. The very it's actually a really funny story because the very first showcase that we went to with my travel ball team, I was fifteen years old. It was in Arizona, and uh, we were back in the day when you didn't go to camps at schools like you do now. The Friday before your tournament started, you'd have a showcase kind of skill work stuff. So on Friday, I, we were doing the skill work stuff, and I was hitting off a batting, mach a batting machine. I was hitting off the batting no machine. No spangled batting machine. I anyway, saw the pitching machine. <laughs> and my future head coach sat down in the bleachers, happened to sit down right in front of my dad, who was there watching, and because he drove me there because I was 15. And... Um, said, hey, like, who's that kid? And my dad's like, well, that's my kid, <laughs> you know? Shout out, Rick. Yeah, and it was kind of developed from there, but the funny part of that story is that Gary got lost. He was supposed to go to another field. He wasn't supposed to be at my field. And he got lost, went to the wrong complex, walked up and was like, who's that kid? And that's how he found me. And my dad told me after, he said, hey, LMU was interested in you, and he really liked how you were hitting. And I was like, LMU, what's that? <laughs> Like where he's like, oh, you know, it's a small school in Los Angeles. I was like, cool, let's go. And he said, all right, it's your first showcase, so let's take a step back. And you know, I went to other showcases. I went actually to um, an invitational show showcase camp in Vegas, mm -hmm. where there were just there were so many coaches there. That you know, like Washington was a big time school mm -hmm. over there, and Elmi wasn't there. And I went out there, I was a junior at that point, and I went out and I performed really well. I had a really good camp, um, and it was the next month, because that's when I kind of started to get a little bit more letters after being mm -hmm. in that showcase. And I went to LMU, and he's like, all right, here's, here's your offer. I was like, this is exactly where I want to go. <laughs> but starting out with a checklist, I think, was most important. I knew yeah. I wanted to be close to home, and LMU is like 39 miles away from my house. Yeah. So there were those things that I made the checklist of, I wanted to be close to home. I wanted to start as a freshman. I wanted to have the opportunity to start as a freshman. I had to earn a spot. And I wanted small class sizes. I love school. I wanted to learn. I wanted to go and get a good degree. And LMU checked off all those boxes. I knew like BYU was interested. I knew that was too far from home, That's it, which was in Utah. Um, Fullerton was interested, which was exciting. Okay. Yeah, but it was farther than LMU. Like, right. whatever. Whatever. But um, that, that checked off being close to home giving me an opportunity to start as a freshman, but the class sizes were enormous. So that being a state school, yeah. so those things kind of weighed into my into my decision, but I wouldn't choose LMU 100 out of 100. Man, I think people, for, not not forget, but class size is such school. a big deal. Yeah. No, the yeah. class size. Oh yeah. Like, it's huge. In, in D3, we had like eight people, 12 yeah. people to a class of yeah. like, that's the environment I need. 
I, I, yeah. just, I can't imagine going to school, you know, no. having gone to LSU where there's like a bazillion people and right. I'm like, what is happening? And that's something to know about yourself. Yeah. That's so important. Like, I knew I wanted to be able to have that relationship with my professors. Same. I wanted to, you know, I ended up getting to know the people that were in my business classes because yeah. I was a business major. I ended up getting to know them because we were all in the same classes going through. Right. Like, exactly. So oh, exactly. It was really, it was really helpful that the, like, 20 kids in the class. Yeah. And then now you're just casually in the Hall of Fame. So it's fine. It's fine. Not the school hall of fame, the sports hall of the fame. The sports hall of fame. <laughs> I love you. It's a hard school, man. It, hey, shout out. You know, you're working. You're working. Here we go. Um, this is a good one. Here we go. When you swing at a Monica Abbott rise ball, at what point do you realize you've made a mistake? <laughs> Immediately out of her hand. <laughs> Take long to know that you've gotten yourself into something that you've first of all it happened so fast. Oh my! I God. say that I've never, I've never been in that situation, but I imagine that it happens fast. I am so confident right when I start my swing, and then once I start, I'm like, no. <laughs> like, like by the time you started the swing, it's already going downhill. Yeah. I imagine. Yeah, you really can't check swing when something like that happens <laughs> that fast. You're either swinging or you're not. So. <laughs> Oh, that's beautiful. But you know what? You have hit. You you've crushed some of those res balls before. You know, a time or two. A time or two. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, this 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 goes well with the previous question. Oh, yeah. How do you keep the game lighthearted day in and day out? <laughs> the queen. Speaking of, of swinging and missing, <laughs> and also laughing about it. Yeah. Well, honestly, like I feel like that part is kind of just me as a person. Like my. My parents, I think, did a great job of making sure that I took things seriously, but didn't take things too seriously. Right. And that has been something that I've carried with me through all aspects of life. Like, I, you know, I don't get stressed a lot. I don't, you know, there, there's not so many things that are just, like, detrimental to my happiness. You know, I mean, when the, the one thing that I can think of that made me, like, stay in bed for a week was, you know, my, like, my dog passing. Walter. Yeah, sure. And that's like it, right. but I think with softball, I love softball. I love softball so much. Like I need to pause cause it's filling me with joy really quick. <laughs> I love it so much and I feel so lucky. Even playing pro, I feel lucky, but playing at any point in my career, I felt lucky. I felt happy that this is what I get to do. So why would I waste my time being like, <laughs> yeah, that's gonna sound really good. Yeah, I love it. It was so great. So not that it's a waste of time, but like that's something that I wanted, I've always wanted people to understand about me is that just because I don't take anything seriously doesn't mean I don't take anything seriously. Right. Like I am, I am so serious about this sport. I've dedicated my life to it and I'm so happy that this is what I'm doing. So yeah. I think that that kind of blends into if I struck out, well, you know what? I'm facing Daniel O'Toole. You're, like, you're going to strike out. It happens. It absolutely happens. And I'm sure that the next at bat, if I get a hit, that she's going to think the same thing of, well, you know, I'm facing a good hitter, so yeah. it's going to happen. And and if I took, it's almost like, I think to me, if I take the credit away where credit is due, that's when I'm getting down on myself where I'm like, if if I get myself out, all right, Sam, like, you know what you right. did, you yeah. passed it. But if I just make an out because I made an out and I'm, and I throw my helmet, which number one, I would never do, but just for example, right. be dramatic. <laughs> I'm taking that credit away from the person who deserves right. that credit. Like she just got a great hitter out. Good for her. You know? Yeah. So I think just number one, embracing how lucky I am, embracing how much I love this sport really helps me say, yeah, I struck out. Like, like all right. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. I also, I think you're, I think you're also very grounded and have a very good perspective on life. You love softball and it's like, in your bones, but it's not where you place all of your worth. You have yeah. a beautiful family, and you have a great life, and you Thank like, you. you know what I mean? You know, it's it, you don't like you don't you don't really seem like you bring the game home with you all the time. Depending on the game. Depending on the game. Yeah, but yeah. you know, for the most part, I would say. I, I like to go based on facts. I like to study, and so after every AU game, you know, I sit down and I watch the recording back, whether it was the best game of my life or the worst game. I'm like, okay, I I, I use it as a way to learn. So that way I'm not just like beating myself up, beating myself right. up. I'd rather go see why did I strike out on that pitch? Oh, you know what? I kind of was late on it. Yeah. You know, those those types of things I think really help me get through is finding a way to say I can get better from this. 
Alright, I didn't know that about you. I didn't know you watched the games. Yeah, it's kind of a self-inflicted torture sometimes, but I... It's I'm like sure. actors who watch their movies. Yeah, you well, know. Like, why did you do that? <laughs> Jeez. I love it so much. <laughs> Ooh. If Athletes Unlimited did the Hunger Games, <laughs> who would win? <laughs> Honestly? Now, off the bat, I have an answer. So do I. And do you want to say so it on three? One? So it's going to be three, two, one, say it. Okay. Ready? Three, two, one. Aubrey Leach. <laughs> Guys, I fully want Aubrey Leach hands down. Yeah, no question. That's an answer. Absolutely. I don't even think we need I to explain it so much. I know we don't. I just, oh, she would. She would win. Such a great human, but also, like, if her and I were in the arena, I would just be like, it's cool, take it. I'd let her kill me. I'll go this way. Yeah. I, going up, gonna... if I was in the Hunger Games and she also was, I'd go up to her and be like, just get it over with. Yeah. Because you, yeah, you'd want to go at the hands of someone that's a great and yes. worthy. Yes. Yeah, you don't want to go by someone who's like lame. Aubrey Leach. Aubrey Leach. Hey, Aubrey. Here we go. <clears throat> if, if you were a Disney princess, oh. who would you be and why? An excellent question. Yes. It's kind of a two part. Oh, wow. You mostly, locked and loaded for this one. Well, mostly because I feel like um, physically and then mentally, emotionally. So, physically, I'd, I'd like to go with Rapunzel because mm. that hair. You know what I mean? Like, like. When I'm doing my braiding, this is not the braid that I would want to represent my answer. I'm just going to say I've been staying with Sam for five days, and every morning she wakes up and sings, when will my life begin? <laughs> so that, that you know, but if I'm going with who I would, who it really is, is be Belle from Beauty and the Beast. Mm -hmm. She loves her some books. And she, you know, I, I think this is going to go a little bit deeper than this question might have intended. Please, please go. But she always kind of felt a little bit out of place. And it was because she was like reading and just really into more than just looks and more than just what's up in front of you. She always was interested in what's deeper and like look at look at the life that she led. Absolutely. I mean, also how she was is very beautiful, but that's not why I think her. Yeah. Also, she's brunette. Like it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. But yeah. She she got a library as a gift, and that I've never related to anything more. Yeah. I mean, I feel like you're a bit of a healthy mix between movie Belle and, you know, Emma Watson Belle and original Belle. Um, you know, Emma Watson, you know, they're just, they're... That's excellent a good one. casting decision. Yeah, by well done. That's a good one. I, I like, shout out to whoever sent that one in. Yeah, seriously. Um, I'm Merida. <clears throat> Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. How long have you played softball? I have played softball, honestly, since I can remember. I want to say organized softball was probably about seven, but I st as soon as I could start throwing the ball in the backyard, my dad and I were in the backyard okay. playing catch. Um, so I'm 30 now, so whoever wants to do the math on that one, literally as long as I can remember. <laughs> Good one. I love it. Okay. Ooh, this could be like an entirely separate podcast. Uh-oh. How does softball affect your mental health? Excellent question. Don't know who sent it in, but whoever did. Wow. Very well done. I, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't. I think that, I, I think that, like I said before, about learning and about using failure as uh, an opportunity to get better keeps me out of being upset about, like, the, letting it affect my mental health. Because, like I said, I love what I do. I love the opportunities that I get. And I don't want to take it for granted. So for me, it's more, I feel like crap about myself right now because of my performance. What can I do about it? And I know that for, for some people, they need to take a, take a step away from softball or they need to go and you know have a spa day or go and just not think about it for a while. But for me, I'm the opposite. I need to dive into it even more. Mm -hmm. So if I feel bad about hitting, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna hit. If I feel bad about my pitch selection, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna practice some vision drills. Yeah. You know, so. It's different for everybody, but I think for me, it, the only time I really feel like my mental health is affected it is, and this is so strange because I don't really put I don't really put a lot of weight into what people think about me unless it's the people that I care about the most. Mm -hmm. Yep. But if I feel like somebody thinks I'm not good enough, that's when I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah. But I find that I talk, I have to talk to the right people in order to get me out of that. If I don't, like, if I don't say, hey, Chitty, I'm feeling really low right now, um, I'm just really feeling like, you know, maybe I'm not the right person for this job, that 
if I don't do that, I could go into a deep hole. Yeah. I could really go and be like, yeah, the windows will be open. Yeah. Like, Fault in our stars is on. <laughs> How can we make ourselves more than that? But if I don't do that, if I don't do the active things to get me out of it, then it can be bad. But I've learned over time that I need to go and say, I need some, like, I believe in myself. I just sometimes need to hear it from, like, well, the importance yeah. and value of an inner circle. Exactly. You know, and it really in any area of your life, but so true. in particular with this, you know? So true. And uh, my dad has always been really good about that. I'm like, yeah. you know what? Maybe I just don't have it anymore. Like, I've said that before. Yeah. And he'll be like, damn, what? What? <laughs> what? Stop it. Yeah. The more you think like that, the more it, the more, that's the thing. The more you think like that, the more it's going to become true. Mm-hmm. You almost manifest it. And then all of a sudden mm-hmm. you're like, wait a second, I did this to myself. Yeah. So the power of, of the mind is extremely strong, but yeah. I'd like to think that I've maintained reading that helps a lot. Mm-hmm. Reading books about the mental game has helped a lot. Mind, oh, yeah. Gym, Mind Gym by Gary Mack has helped me the most of any book or anything that anybody could say. So I, I, I highly suggest finding the things that work for you so that when softball, it's not that it's, not that it's never going to affect your mental health, it's that what are you going to do when it does? Wow. Ooh, I got hot. Yeah. <laughs> well, I love that answer too because I feel like it's really applicable to kind of uh, a lot of your, most areas of your life. You know yeah, what I mean? truly. That was really good. I love that. Awesome Sam. question. Thank you. Oh, <clears throat> if you had to pick a dodgeball team mm. with five other AU athletes, okay. not including yourself. I'm on the team? You're on the team, Ooh. but you can pick five. Who would you pick? Okay. Number one. Ooh. Oh, I'm ready. You want no, me? yeah, you go. Okay. I, that's just intense. I've got, I've got some, I've got, I think I thought her Okay, right. let's go. Um, Alicia Ocasio is my first pick okay. because, yeah. man, she can move. I mean, she's just like, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm also going to go with another pitcher. Uh, well, Lily's utility, but uh, Danielle O'Toole. Surprisingly quick on her feet. Pitchers, yeah. you don't think about that yeah. being quick on their feet. She's extremely quick on her feet. Yeah. And she can throw the ball, the same as Lily, where, like, from any position. Yeah. So, like... A ball's getting thrown, and then like she'll miss it, and then yeah, yeah, exactly. I also feel like so far with the two that you've picked, you, you're two for two on intimidation. Because yes. First of all, when Lily when Lily walks by, you're like, I'm just gonna take a step back. When O'Toole's on the mound, it's scary. Just when I when I'm photographing her, it's it's intimidating. Yeah. It's, it's all in the eyes. Yeah. Continue. Okay. So my number three pick might make you giggle, but um, Aubrey Monroe, number one, because I mean her throws are spot on. So if you need to hit a target at the end of the day, you go with Aubrey. Yeah. But also, if she just turns to the side, no one can hit her because you can't see her anymore. Yeah. She's very thin in stature. Can I can I counter that with maybe it's it's a lot of limbs. It is a lot of limbs, but they're so thin. And I don't want to hate on Aubrey Monroe. She'll just like get out of the way, you know, because she'll be like, well, she'd use it to her advantage. Absolutely, and I would want her to use it. That's like why I would pick her is because. She's she's thin, so like where where is she? Yeah, where'd she and, go? Yeah, and but then she's got that like oh I'm gonna throw it out. Yeah, I'm gonna take her head off. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Pick number four. Pick number four. I'm gonna go with Aubrey Leach because she is an assassin, yeah. but also she's tiny. So all of a sudden you're like I just got pegged by a dodgeball and I don't know who did it. She's hiding behind Aubrey Monroe. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Ab- absolutely. Okay. And I Number think five. I want to go, I want to stay on like the stealthy route. So I think I'm going to go with Anissa Urtes because mm. she is yeah. sly, she's quick, and she gets rid of the ball quickly. So in dodgeball, if you catch it, right. she's going to catch and release faster than anybody. Right. So I, I feel really, really confident. About you know her. where I feel like Aubrey Leach, I feel like she comes in to play well for the trick plays. Absolutely. Like, did you ever do that thing where like someone my size would run up to the middle? get in like a hunch squat and then someone runs up and like like jumps, jumps off, off your them. back and yeah. I feel like that's what you could use Aubrey Leach for the acrobatics. Yeah, I would be the one on the ground that she'd be jumping off. Well no, yeah, I want that was that's no I'm saying like I'm taking that position. So all I'm this, a solid team. Look all I'm gonna say is if you have a team, I I wanna know what the people think that they're who who yeah. they would pick. Who would you pick? So I would like to know that drop too. it in the in the comments or wherever you're or listening. The DMs, whatever. Yeah. Because I feel like we could really have some fun with that was really fun picking. With who team. you would pick. I hope that the girls that I picked are happy. Oh absolutely. Yeah. I just wanna say I'm not gonna do a full team, but the staff when we got to Athletes Unlimited, <laughs> the whole staff played a wiffle ball game. I was there, I witnessed it. And John Patrickoff was on the other team, but he was playing on the left side. And 
I would pick John Patrick if I had to go staff. Yeah. He really did some work over there. Yeah. I would I would definitely want him on my staff squad. He's like one of those underdogs you don't really expect and then all of a sudden he's your best player. He was he was just an MVP yeah. and I want that kind of person on my team. Believe it. So there you go, Mr. John Good Patrick. Question. Here we go. How do you balance your softball career and your social life? I've gotten this question quite a bit in my life, and I'm going to tell you this answer is going to be um, not what you want, but I'm the worst person to ask because I didn't. I didn't. I, I don't. I don't balance it. In college, I went to like a party and a half. Um, yeah. <laughs> it was probably in like the room next to And it was in the off season. Like if it was in the spring, I'd be like, night. Um, yeah, we didn't, I, we didn't go to a party. We didn't do anything in, in, during season. It was like only in the off season if you ever did something. Yeah, well, I mean, I didn't. Plenty of people do and, and yeah. did, but but for me, I did not. I did even with school. Like I, I got the, I got good enough grades to play. And I think about this all the time. If I could go back, I know I could have gotten such better grades because I really just, I did enough to get B's. Right. Some A's. I did get some A's. But like I did good enough. To where I could dedicate almost all of my time to softball. Mm. So in high school, in college, it's it's different now because it's not a year-round thing as far as being in school and being on a yeah. team. I'm doing most of this on my own, so I have a lot more free time to do stuff. Sure. I still have no idea what to do with this time because I never did anything and before. And library. Yeah, so like I read a lot. <laughs> like I take Reggie on two walks a day, so I feel she like does. I'm killing it. I can vouch for that. But um. But no, I, I really didn't, and for me, that was what I needed to do in order to accomplish my softball goals. If I could hang out with my friends, or if I could do something, I would, but there were times, you know, saying no to sleepovers, saying no to the beach, saying no to snowboarding, yeah. you know, all those different things. Saying no to every birthday party. Ever. Yeah, if the birthday party fell on a Saturday or Sunday, sorry, I'll send you a gift in the mail. You know, so I, I really didn't balance it, and I don't have any regrets, yeah. so I think at at the time of saying no to all those different things, I still was able to have experiences because my best friends were on my team. Right. So, um, yeah, I would, uh, when I say I dedicated my life to softball, I mean like Friday night, no, I can't, I have to wake up early, I gotta go. Yep. You know? See that movie? The movie starts at what time? 7.30? <laughs> oh my you God. You gotta be out like your mind. mind. <laughs> yeah. That means I won't get home till like 10.30? Mm -mm. No thanks. No, so even, even uh, you know, like, Boyfriends. I had mm -hmm. boyfriends where I was like, I think we gotta break up. You're taking too much of my time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you wanna hang out on the weekends? I'm sorry. Bye. Unless you can come sit right by the dugout. That's <laughs> not gonna happen. I wish I had a, a more rounded answer than that, but but yeah, hey, everyone's unique. I like it. Yeah, that's your I story. Didn't, I didn't balance Tell it. it. Oh, cool. What is your favorite Harry Potter book? Mm. Prisoner of Azkaban, third book. It's the best one. Okay, bonus question. What is your favorite Harry Potter movie? Order of the Phoenix. Shut up. I know, I know, I know. Anything with a lot of serious black in it, like that's... I'm about to, I, first of all, I didn't know that about you, and I'm about to be visibly upset. Because I remember seeing that movie on the midnight premiere in the theater, yeah. and yeah. I left, and I was in a blind rage because I disliked it so much. Well, I saw it at a theater, not a theater, and I loved it. I don't know what it is. I think that they captured the darkness of that book so well even though they didn't include quidditch which was a bummer the the darkness of that book was captured in the movie harry was so mad the whole time so agree to disagree that's fine favorite book deathly hallows favorite movie chamber of probably poa oh yeah that, they they really that's that was that'd be my, my second and then chamber of secrets it's hard to pick a favorite. They're all so I know, good. I know, I know. Okay. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm, I'm back. Okay. It's fine. <laughs> okay, this one's not so much of a question. It was, it was kind of more like a statement, but how do you feel about someone who uh, is, is a tomboy but wants to find someone who loves you for you? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. I mean, no matter what you are or who you are or how you present yourself or how you identify, like you need to find somebody that loves you for you regardless. So if you feel like guilty, like say you are a tomboy and you feel like you can't be, you're not, you're not, yeah. you're not around the right people. Yeah. I didn't start dressing more like your quote unquote feminine female, I guess you would call it, 
until I got much older. I, I love making basketball shorts. You know, I don't know how to match anything. I didn't yeah. discover Lululemon until I was 22. You know what I mean? Thank goodness tough. for that. That's tough. But, um, but no, if, if, dude, I'm one of the weirdest people. And what? I know, imagine. There, you know, there's just a lot of goofiness to hang out with me. But Kevin has been such an amazing partner because he accepts it, he loves it, and he embraces it. Yeah. And I've had people in the past who, it, you know, not really, I didn't really date it, but like talking to yeah. people, talking to guys, and they were like, you, that's, softball's all you do. Right, right. Or you wear your hair up way more than you wear your hair down. I'm like, all right, bro, bye. Yeah. Oh, for sure. You know, so I think. Or making you feel like, making you feel guilty, maybe yeah. about like what you're. Yeah, or making, like, making comments that are, that are extremely towards the realm of sexism where yeah. you're like this is how you should look right and this is how you should dress yeah like absolutely the f not yeah this is who i am this is how i want to present myself and this is who i want to be so if you don't like it then then that's fine on to the yeah. next one so i know it can be challenging in the dating life and the relationship world because we all want to be loved like we really you know like for the most part I mean, for the podcast just love me <laughs> we really like realistically a lot of a lot of our needs come from wanting to be loved, and yeah. I think one thing that helps is loving yourself first, mm -hmm. and really appreciating who you are, and really appreciating your style, because, yeah. man, people can do so many things with clothes. I really, it baffles me. Yeah. It's so cool. Yeah. And, and a look, and a hairstyle, and hair color, like all these different things, so if you can appreciate that about yourself, and love that about yourself first, you're going to start attracting those who love that about you and accept that about you too. So, man. Also, you know what? I don't know who, who sent that in, but that's a vulnerable Very question. Vulnerable, yeah. I, I appreciate that question yeah. a lot. Yeah. I don't, I mean, everybody knows that I'm married, but yeah. I don't really talk about relationships no. ever. Ever. Yeah. Well, so that was a really nice question. Yeah. I, I love it. Um, let's, we're going to kick it on back to the, the more lighthearted side of things. What is the key to a perfect bun? Now it's kind of odd because you're actually not wearing a bun right now, obviously. But if if you were giving people, you know, one or two tips on the perfect bun, what would you say? A really tight twist. That's the first thing okay. that I gotta make sure I really twist it. I yeah. really got you know, I really gotta twist it tight. And the key for me is making sure that it's at the right spot on my head, which mm -hmm. is typically the very tip top. Yeah. If it's in the back, it's in a Gravity. Yes. Gravity. There's yeah. so much of a hair here. So if it's at the very tip top, then I'm like, I know that this thing is going to stay in for a while. Yeah. And it's going to be looking good. Yeah. So a tight twist and the proper placement on the, on your head. Yeah. Huge key. Maybe a tutorial is... I think we should do that. Future. Yeah, I think keep keep a... Very different bun placements, you and I. Absolutely. I, yeah, could, I would look like a forefather if I did a bun like that. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what I look like with it on top, but I don't know. <laughs> Let's get into it with this one. Okay. Assign the following athletes' personalities as a meal. Okay. Okay. Here are the right. here are the there's five athletes. Are you going to read the athletes to me first? And I am. Then... I am. Okay, so I'm not doing one by one. Uh, not. Let me just read them all first. Okay. Okay. Number one, Sam Fisher. Number two, mm -hmm. Hannah Flippin. <laughs> Number three, Kat Osterman. Oh my gosh. Number four, Amanda Chittister. Okay. Number five, Samantha Shaw. Okay. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, out of the gate, I, just already, I have some really strong feelings on this. Okay, do you so, want to say yours first I, and me, or do you Well, I don't have necessarily everybody, yeah. but can, okay. I, I'll, I'll, can I skip down to number two? I don't remember. To Hannah name. Flippin. Yeah, go ahead. Let me talk about Hannah Flippin, you guys. If you don't know who Hannah Flippin is, you better get on some YouTube. <laughs> um, for Hannah Flippin, I have, I've put a Kraft Burger. Okay. Not just a regular burger, but a Kraft Burger. Okay. And let me tell you why. Okay. Hannah Flippin, in, in my opinion, is one of the most consistently phenomenal, let's, let's maybe just talk defense, even though, gosh, she can hit the ball. Good. Blessing. But it's so consistent. Which is the which is the hamburger part of it, but when you have a craft burger, that's where you add like the bacon or the avocado or the fancy cheese or something. Because Hannah Flippin is so good, but then she has those moments where you're just like, you just 
blew my brain with yeah. how good you are. Okay. And that's kind of the toppings on the craft burger. It's something you can always depend on. Like you know what you're getting when you get a burger, but you can spice it up when you wanted to. Okay. But at the foundation, it's it's just so good. I love that answer. Do you feel good about that? Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna say that's my own answer as well. Though, well why don't you go ahead? Well, but I'm gonna go in order. Okay, go ahead. So who was the first one? Sam Fisher. Oh me. <laughs> If I had to make a meal for myself based on my personality, I ugh, this is not, this is not a meal. I would I would honestly gotta go with chocolate chip cookies and a glass of milk. I, I love it. I okay. love it so much. Okay, because glass of milk, you know, you, you get what you need out of it, but it's not too much. Right. You know, and then chocolate chip cookies, you put them together, and it's just all of a sudden you're like, you, you're a pretty good mix of yeah. a lot of things. It's also a classic. You're a classic. Oh, you know what you. I mean? Yeah, I, I like that it. twist. I wasn't going to say that, but I like that twist. I think that's a great answer. Okay. For you, to be honest, the first thing that really came to mind was spaghetti and meatballs. Interesting. Again, going along the, the classic route. Okay. I'm, I'm on the same I path as that. you, just a different road. I, love spaghetti I don't know meatballs. if that made sense, but it does. spaghetti and meatballs, to me, you okay. know, it's yeah. hearty. Yeah. It's good. It's got, you know, it's got a lot of carbs in it. It's going to give you energy. When I think about you, I think about you hype me up. You know what I mean? There's yeah. a lot of things. So anyway, but I, I think I prefer the cookies and milk. I think that's great. I want cookies and milk. Can I give you my casterman? Wait, I didn't get to go to the next one. Oh, I'm sorry. Hannah Flippin. Hannah Flippin, I'm going to go with a meal from In-N-Out. Number one, she's from California. Mm-hmm. Number two, Hannah Flippin is a little bit on the picky side of eating things. Okay. That's, she's, she's pretty we'll picky. for us. Yeah, yeah. Hannah Flippin that. is pretty picky. But In-N-Out is the same... I'm, I'm going in the same vein as what you said. Yeah. Is because you know what you're getting. Right. When you go to In-N-Out, and every time you like go in, and you're like, I'm so excited to eat God. In-N-Out. But then you leave there, you're like, that was the best so decision good. I've ever made. Yeah. I love so it. I think Hannah Flippin is a classic. I mean, nothing on the burger because she's very picky. Yeah. But you go, you get In-N-Out, and depending on kind of like the game and the pressure situation, right. you add a milkshake or not. Yeah. So that's, that's a answer. clutch answer. Kat Osterman, do you, do you have an idea or you want me to go? I have an idea. Why don't you go first? So Kat Osterman, to me, is an adult. Like, she's a grown-up. Right. And so I'm going to go with a well-balanced meal of, like, a meat and then sides. You know, like steak, potatoes, asparagus. Okay. Because, number one, she's from, she's from Texas. Yeah. So you know they eat hearty in Texas. Yes. But yes, they do. she's she's a grown-up. So, like, yeah. she's got her thing together. She's, you know, she can afford to get a meal as opposed to a 21-year-old who's, like, Ramen? Ramen? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you know, she's a, a, an established person. She's married. She's got a stepdaughter. Yeah. So she's going to go and she's going to have, like, her, her meal for based on cat is going to be steak, potatoes, and asparagus. Okay. I, and you know what? I feel like the reasoning were really similar because mm-hmm. I was going to say she's a pot roast. Oh, yeah. You know, it's... it's about the same thing. Yeah. yeah. It's old school. It's, it's hearty. It's meaty. It's like it's going to hit all your food groups. You can count on it. You can let it cook for a while. Like you, you don't have to deal with it because like they got it. You know what yeah, I mean? It's gonna be good every time. Yeah, and it's kind of like you know when you when you think about pot roast, I think of like a recipe that like your mom handed down or your grandparents yeah, handed down. So I, I think like that. that. Cool. Wow. Look at us. Who's next? Amanda Chittister. Oh, hit first. me with it. Here's the thing. This is gonna be this is a challenging one because like that's my favorite person so I'm thinking of my favorite meal okay you know but at the same time like I don't know if buffalo cauliflower and rice is Amanda Chittister it's not but that's my favorite I think of my favorite person I think of my favorite meal so yeah but if I'm thinking chitty I'm thinking 10 colors on a plate so I'm thinking peppers all all colors of bell yeah. peppers she's gonna have sweet potatoes in there she's gonna have okay. so many different colors because she's an extremely vibrant person okay so I can see her almost being like a fajita dish where there's just like so oh, many veggies. Okay. There's protein and there's very little carbs. Like she's she's yeah. very she's very careful with her eating. Yeah, yeah. But there's so many colors. She's extremely vibrant and she's extremely health conscious. So she wants to See, have something. I was thinking like you know when you've been to Chili's and they bring fajitas out and every and sizzles. Everybody knows. Yeah. Like when when Amanda Chittister comes up to the plate, yeah. everyone you stop what you're doing and, yeah. and you watch. Even if she walks into a room, you're like yeah. She's here. I mean, she's a ray of freaking sunshine. So I'm going with the fajita dish because it's always good. It sizzles. Yeah. And it's colorful and healthy and tasty. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna just use that. Okay. I think that's a really great answer. Thank you. Okay. Number five, Samantha Shaw. McDonald's. 
<laughs> oh, why am I not surprised? Well, here's the thing. I do have a reason for it. Okay. Well, because number one, I love McDonald's Fair. and I love Sam Chow. Fair. And I think that that you know her personality. Number one, she's young, so like McDonald's mm-hmm. makes sense because it's cheap. Yeah. And it's great. Yeah. And Sam is young and she's great. So you go to McDonald's. Yeah. And everything on the menu. At least this is for me. I don't know if this is true for anybody else, but everything is good. Mm-hmm. Sam is a five tool player. Sam can pitch, wow. she can hit, she yeah. can play first, she she can play the out, she can do so many things. She's very she's a very versatile player. Yeah. And I think that McDonald's is a very versatile place. I I love <laughs> I love your answer. Um I'm gonna differ please pretty wildly on this one from you. Uh, to me, Sam Shao, and it's not necessarily a specific dish, but to me, she's that dish at a restaurant that's like the today's special. Like okay. they only make it once or twice. It's kind of like you're you're gonna deviate from what you normally get, and you're gonna give this thing a shot, and it's gonna be a home run. Okay. Like it, it's gonna you're gonna be like, oh my god, this one time we went to this one place, I got that special thing with a special sauce. <laughs> that's Sam Shao. She's gonna hit you with a home run. Yeah. You know. I like that answer a lot. Yeah. I, I think it I think it was different for me because I've gotten to know Sam off of the bat flip. So mm-hmm. like I see this this daily special because Sam shot like I think of highlight Sam. Yeah. And then I right. think of I think of Sam off the field and I think I think my she's so I think she's versatile. I love she's it. Versatile. I love great. it. Great great question. Yeah, great question. I love that so much. Okay. Who would win in an arm wrestling competition, you or your guest host? I think you're going to like this answer because it's definitely going to be my guest host, Jade Hewitt. CrossFit. <laughs> I just got a, my wing is just not what it used to be. See, and here's the thing. Part of me felt, it felt good when you said me. Oh, sorry. But, then when, you, but then when you came with and said it's because my arm isn't feeling so great, then t- that's just... I, do you want me to? I can. I honestly, we can cut this and I can leave. I just felt like that. Was we good. can. I, I mean, if I had a healthy arm, then it I don't felt, think you're gonna like my answer. It, it felt a little. <laughs> it felt a little personal. It is personal. It's between me and you. It's personal. Let's just move on from that one. Hmm. Wow, this one could encompass a lot of things. What are your values, beliefs, slash life motto that makes you you? Wow. Fifteen seconds. Go. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> Well, I, I value I value being happy. So whatever that means, whatever that looks like, that's kind of what I strive for. Does this make me happy? There's some things where you know, like going to the post office. That doesn't make me happy, but you got to do it. Right. You know, so right. there's things like that. So I think I really value um, I value being happy. I value loving the things that I'm doing, and so I think that's my that's kind of what I wake up in the morning striving to do. Yeah. Beliefs. I, I, I believe that there's a right and a wrong. So I, I, I fully believe that I want to always do the right thing in any situation, whether that's for myself, for my family, for the people I care about. I want to do what's right. And I, that's a high belief of mine. I hold that very high to myself. Um, what was the second, last part of it? Beliefs, uh, values, life, life motto. motto. I don't know. I, I Are you feel like one for me? well, I, I just feel like you're to me. You're one of those friends where you're like, you keep it simple. You yeah, know what I, mean? I, you I don't overcomplicate things. I do like keeping things simple, especially like gosh, especially in sport, but uh, in everything, yeah, keep it simple. Like why? I've always been like, why? Why let something get you worked up that you have no control over, right. or or those types of things? But yeah, I think keeping it simple. I think that'd be a good life motto that I would say that I live by. But I do love a Derek Gear quote. Actually, I have two quotes. Lay it on us. Derek Jeter, you know, he, there, there's people that are going to be better than you, but there's no excuse for anybody to work harder than you do. So I think I really try to live by that as far as working hard in whatever, you know, a lot of people say the way that you do anything is the way that you do everything. So I think that I I really try to live by that. But then also Lil Wayne <laughs> in one of his songs, and it's my bio on everything, Real G's Move in Silence Like Lasagna, and I've always felt like that where... I just want to do the things that I love and that make me happy. And if good things come from it, good things come from it. I don't want to go and be like, hey, look what I'm doing. Look what yeah, I did. Yeah, I, yeah. I try very hard to do the things I need to do. And period. That's it. You know? Those are what quotes? What philosophers? Wow. Derek Jeter and Lil Wayne. That's some good stuff. I'm just saying. Wow. What a good question. 
Who are your favorite musical artists slash what are your favorite songs? Oh, uh, I us, love talking music. Give us a few. Well, number one, Ed Sheeran. I mean, I mean, I love that guy. Yeah. I saw him with Jordan Taylor in Tokyo last year. And was it amazing? Changed my life. Wow. Um, Mumford and Sons. I'm a big sucker mm -hmm. for Mumford and Sons. Those are my main two. I yeah. love, but I love old music too. Like hit me with some Van Halen. Mm. You know that that just I just really like that kind of that that generation of music is right up my alley. Yeah. But um, no, my, my go to is Ed Sheeran, Mumford and Sons. But my favorite song, obviously, as everybody's expecting, "Rocky Like a Hurricane" by The Scorpion. Duh. <laughs> if you didn't know that, what are, what are you doing? That's the best song ever in the history of music. Yeah. I mean, I know it. I don't think it won a Grammy or anything, but I would have given it a Grammy. That walk-up song. When you hear that in the stadium, you know Sam you Fisher know who's coming up, coming up to bat. You don't know what's gonna happen, but you know who's coming <laughs> up. That's for sure. <laughs> I, you know, uh, I will give a new song that I've really enjoyed oh, as of late, as soon as it came out and I've been listening. It's not, I never skip it on mine. Okay. You know how sometimes you skip songs sure. and you love it? Walk Me Home by Pink. Yeah. I love that that's song. That's a great album. I love just, I love her. Yeah. She was very empowering, but that's just, I really like that song. Yeah. yeah. That's a little insight to my all over the place music taste. Yeah. Because like also, love me some Lizzo. I mean... Look, you like you can like everything. It's I great. like it all, except for if it's if somebody screams in a song, I change it. Mm, okay. Like absolutely not. Okay. Yeah. Uh, those are great answers. I love them so much. Thanks for asking. Whoever asked that. Thanks for asking. <laughs> okay. Here we go. We only got a few left here, guys. Okay. All right. What is the best brand of chocolate milk? Oh. Or or if maybe brands aren't your style, maybe you just want to go like recipe. Well, I mean, yeah. I I don't buy pre-made chocolate milk. Oh. But like if I'm going to a donut shop, I'm gonna get Rocky. Okay. Rock View. I don't know what you're talking about, so either one of those sounds well, great. Well, now I wanna look it up and make sure that I know what it is. I'm pretty sure it's Rock View. Okay. Rockgate is the street that I used to live off of, mm, so that makes probably sense. Probably not that. Um, you can get it at Trader Joe's, it's chocolate milk. Okay. It's so good, but no, I get my 2% milk and my Hershey syrup, and I pour the milk in first, I think that's important. Mm -hmm. And then I, you know, I do like six or seven swirls of the syrup. Mm -hmm. Mix that bad boy up and that's my go-to. And then what's the key after you're done mixing? You have to lick the spoon. Lick the spoon. Absolutely. There's no, you can't, you, there's no wavering on licking the spoon. Yeah, for sure. That's some really, but, but did you say what kind of chocolate syrup? Hershey's? Hershey's? Okay, yeah. gotcha. All right, this is our last question. And oh boy. Oh. What do you want most in life? Good question, simple answer. I just want to be happy. I mean, I just, I just want to be happy. That's I don't know what that means all the time, but I love it. Like we said a minute ago, you don't overcomplicate it. What's your answer? I know I'm not the host, but like, <laughs> man, I, I, I was not prepared to. I, you couldn't have asked me what my favorite song was. You had to go with a really deep question of. I don't know. It seems like a, you know, top of your head. What's the first thing that comes to your mind? Um, honestly, I, I feel like to have a family. Oh, that's nice. Would be the. That's what you want most in life. Yeah, but I also, I, yeah, I think our an our answers are probably super different because we're in different places. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. But yeah, That's always good to, to be happy. But right now, as I'm sitting here, 31, I would be like, to have a family. To have a family. You want to know my? Um, ever since I was a kid, as long as I can remember, blowing out candles and making a wish. Yeah. Anything like I'm very much like it's 11, 11, make a wish, an eyelash, make a wish, okay. a fountain, throw it away, <laughs> make a wish. I love making wishes. Ever since I was a kid, as long as I can remember, I've always wished for the same thing. Okay. Even no matter what part of my life I'm at, and that's always been my wish. I just want, want to be happy. Wow. See, when is I is it gonna come true now that I said it? Of course it's gonna come true. I hope so. That's the difference in you and I. When I was twelve, I was like, oh, I really want a Game Boy. I really want you know, a Game You know. And meanwhile, you're over here just. I know. I'm, I'm pretty yeah, sure, like ten-year-old me, I was like throwing the coin into the fountain, which I don't know if it's good for pollution or not. And just, sorry, I just wish to be happy. That's beautiful. Thanks. I love it. Guys, I just want to say thank you to everybody who sent in. These were some yeah, th these really good questions. questions. Great um, question. And uh, this was a lot of fun. I think it's a good opportunity to, for the people that listen to this to get to know you because you're always talking about other people. <laughs> so this is kind of a fun time to get to feel like we all know Sam Fisher a little bit better. I'm happy about that. Yeah, I had a good time. Did, did you enjoy this or do I you did. prefer being on this side of the mic? It, 
if I liked it and if I prefer the other side, yeah. those are two different questions. Number one, okay. I liked it. Number two, definitely prefer being on the other side. Okay. <laughs> um, well, guys, thank you all for uh, for joining us today yeah. on the Unknown Pro um, with Athletes Unlimited. That's us. Sam Fisher. You can follow her on most social media platforms, I think. At Sam Fisher 52. It's the same across. It's pretty simple. You yeah. can follow her. Go follow her because, man, you want to talk about, we didn't even talk about really, like, Twitter. You like, can. The queen, and I, I know you're going to cringe when I say this, but like, you want to talk about someone who's tweeting some slam dunks on the internet. Like, you, you've gone viral. I did have a Rapunzel tweet that did fairly well. Yeah. It, you go look it up. She, do you remember, off the top of your head, do you remember what it was? Can you tell us? It was when quarantine started and I was like, let's not get, you know, like, Rapunzel met her husband in quarantine, so let's think positively. Yeah, and it went viral, and it was on meme pages. Yeah, like like other pe like other major <laughs> like memes and all that were taking it and like recreating it themselves. So like, it not only did it go viral on your end, it went viral like in all these other places you didn't even know so, about. You know how many people came at me and were like, she was kidnapped and imprisoned. You know those okay. difference, right? Yeah. And I'm like, I watched Tangles. More, I know how the story like, goes. Like I know what's going. Like I know that she was kidnapped. Yeah. So that's where I was like, just let's be funny for a second, people. Dealing with funny. fame, man. You just it's hard. You've got a couple of big a big ones. So anyway, all that is to say is if you want to be entertained and get some really great insight, go follow Sam Fisher on social media because it's a real party. I'm not that interesting. <laughs> so, you know, that's totally up to you, but I hope not to disappoint. Now yeah. that the standards are set really. You high. could never disappoint. So thank you guys for listening. We really appreciate it. Make sure you follow Unknown Pro on anywhere you listen to your podcast, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all the other, et cetera. et cetera, and all of the other places. This is Sam Fisher. My name is Jay Hewitt. Thank you so much for joining us, and have a fabulous day. Ditto. Cue the music. <laughs>